Watashiwa Ninja Days. In the spring of my training, my mind was like water. The Grand Master Shen Shu told me about enlightenment. The body is a tree of wisdom. The mind is the base of a bright mirror. At all times, wipe it diligently. And whatever you do, don't let it come to pass that it should become rusty. In the summer, my training commenced. My master ordered me to pound rice for eight months. And so, I did it. But I replaced my fists with an 88-pound sword and the rice with a hundred-foot-tall leviathan. To be ignorant is to suffer. To gain 80 or more levels of strength from fighting is progress. Welcome back to Kenshi. Today in Kenshi, we're training everything, mainly by fighting leviathans along the coast. For gaining stats, it's amazing. But there is a problem. You see, leviathans travel in groups, and generally they don't like it when you harm them. Today in Kenshi, we're using our extremely overpowered character, Torsolo, who started off as a torso, but then acquired limbs, and not just any limbs. They were superhuman robotic limbs, and they allowed us to run at speeds over 40 miles an hour. For in dismantling the natural order, imposed by high society, we come to reach a higher state of understanding. Some call it Zen, Others call it enlightenment. But for these videos, it's mostly just philosophical shitposting now to the highest state of nirvana. Now for today, we're hunting for leviathan pups. They're some of the strongest enemies in the game, but by no means unmanageable for us. The larger leviathans are probably scarier, and I think they represent a valuable training mechanism. Ones like this are actually perfect. The parent leviathans actually have to watch me as I slowly murder their leviathan pup, and take no damage whatsoever from it, and then steal its pearl once I kill it. It's honestly crazy that he can block this many attacks, but my character's just so overpowered now. <laughs> also, their hitboxes mess up because they're so large. Which is kind of a shame because I want to make an army of giant crab people next. But I'm sure we'll figure something out. Okay, so, whoa, we just sent that one flying up in the air. Oh my god, look at that. It looks like the cow went over the moon. Jesus Christ. Christ, can we even get to the- No, we can't even get to the body of it anymore. I didn't even know that could happen. It was still worth it. We've got one more here. Let's see if we could get this one. One pup on this cliff. And no, I'm gonna have to fight the parents as well. I don't think that this is safe. This doesn't seem particularly safe. And have I mentioned the Garu? Basically, we're reaching the point with this character where he could fight anyone he comes across in the world and probably gain a lot of experience from just fighting everyone. So I'm content to send Torsolo out on a journey, a journey of violence, and loot everything he comes across. These things are pretty useless. It's actually kind of a waste, but in suffering in Kenshi lies the way to stat gains, and I do it for the stats. I still have a number of interesting locales to visit. We can just run our way to Mongrel to trade things in, get chased by a bandit. Now arriving in the Foglands, I'm taking a look at our stats. Our character's base stats are far and above his, uh, his combat stats. I think we could bring this heavy weapons and melee attack and defense up a lot today, so we'll just try to get into combat with our sword. Usually the highest tier of stats are exponentially harder to get as you go, and we'll get chased by Fogman. They may actually get a few good swings off on me. I'll be fine, don't worry. Now arriving on the outskirts of the city, it looks like we've made it, and the ninja guard is gonna take over from here. We'll just sell everything back, including this leviathan pearl. Meet Beep and sadly have to reject him. For this quest is mine alone. You I will give my kingdom. You will be my successor. We'll buy one of our last masterwork legs, the stealth leg, and now we can- I'd like to see what this actually does to our stealth. Probably nothing, I might just be buying these things for kicks, but there's no harm in trying as this is one of the best places to steal. A beep is now sneaking after me, but unfortunately I can still be seen. I guess I need the thief's arms. Hmm, how would we do with this? I, I actually can't be seen. The skeleton trader I can just- I can pretty much just get away with stealing from. Beep is following me in sneak mode. I've just always found this to be one of the weirdest places. You can totally get away with anything here. I can sell them to the barman? <laughs> like right across the street. And let's just keep stealing- wow, this is somewhat broken. I've heard about this strategy, but I haven't really tried it much till now. This is supposed to be one of those powerful ways to make money. I'll just be taking more arms then. Let's return at once to the original reason we came to Mongrel. Mongrel is home to some of the weakest NPCs in the game, the Fogmen, and I want to see how we do in fighting with them, but we're still slaying them all really easily. I think we could pretty much destroy the entire Foglands in this run. I am powerful. I have slain armies. And what better way to start than by radiating out from Mongrel? There should be more Fogmen nests here, and let's just go one by one. Anywhere 
we see numbers is usually a good sign. We'll start here. We've got some escaped Holy Nation servants. Make short work of them. Oh, there goes a leg. Yeah, whoa, there it is. Look, it's right up in the air. Like it'll just fall right out of the sky. Fall right out of the sky. Let us continue on our quest. This looks like a guardian. There should be a prince nearby. Here we go. Now we've got a nice trail of them. He guards, he guards. They are fast and they do hit him for low hits. I don't really like this. I think he could get easily killed. It's just too many small attacks. He's extremely over encumbered though, so that's making combat more difficult. But ultimately, making yourself weaker makes you stronger in the end. There goes, oh. There goes one. All he needs is one swing. If he gets one, look at that guy just down right away. Three exclamation points. I'm expecting to see more limbs going flying as we go. He just needs to get better at blocking multiple attacks. It's always just a matter of time before he hits. Block. Swing. Oh shit. He's like Sauron from the Lord of the Rings. We'll rest up the night. And yet still, I don't think that we're best off against these enemies. We actually have a penalty when fighting opponents weaker than us with melee defense. So this might be getting us hurt against these guys. Oh god. Another Naruto runner. We've been getting a lot of Naruto runners. Dude. Come here. <laughs> Please come back. Please come back. This is like the opposite of the problem that I usually have. Right. Uh, oh, here he comes again. No, I just be free, be free. Date bio, date bio. For I know an opponent far superior to the ones we have faced. But why not start with a time-honored tradition? Start with extremely overpowered blood spiders, whom I've now been told are actually programmed wrong into the game and they're not supposed to be as strong as they are. You're supposed to get a good stat boost when you're fighting opponents stronger than you, so I have no clue what their strength stat is, but they seem to kick my ass every single time, so... It's a start, it's a start. They're also... What are they, a reskinning of... There's a lot of enemies that have this model, but... Wildlife is always a good place to start. Except wildlife that might eat... These guys might eat me. Don't let that happen to you! He's two-shotting them. He's still not quite there yet, but it's close. One, two, yeah. Man, that's not really a very cool line. We can't pick the lock, but we can smash. For, oh, good, this is going down. A library of the Second Empire. A bed of my backpack. Oh, shit. I know, not while I'm in bed, please. I, beak things are probably quite strong. Yeah. Good night, beak thing. I love you, beak thing. Oh, more! Now this... I need some sleep. There must be another nest somewhere over here. They're just gathering up, I guess, for revenge for my last visit. Good, we're hitting them for over 200 each swing. Against Beak Things, Gorillas, and Leviathans, this thing gets a 50% damage increase. Thank you, sleeping bag. Oh, more. More of you. And smashy smash the door. And get ready for a lame tagline. Trick or treat. And what is in this? Oh, there's actually nobody trying to kill me in this library. Oh, shit. Look at all that. What is in this chest? Can I use my strength? No, I'm not strong enough. I don't have any tools either. There are many books in here. I wonder what else is upstairs. We have more books. And it looks like this is... Oh, this is a medical workbench. I thought it was a research bench. I'm actually completely unprepared for this place. I thought it would be better. There's nothing in the general storage chest. Fat leather. More books. We won't really be using books this playthrough, though. Sorry, books. More books. Goodbye, books. Now, we took all of the eggs from this beak thing next, so evolutionarily, the only just thing to do is completely wipe them out, so we'll just let them all hit us. And this should be a great way to train up Torsolo's melee defense and melee attack. Is uh, Quite frankly, he just needs a lot more experience here in this department. And if he gets his ass whooped a bit, then, uh, uh, he's ultimately better off for it, so. 53, 54. And this may not seem very fast, now that I'm going at four times speed, but for him, the stat creases are now so sluggish that even this is pretty fast. How many beak things does it take to get to the center of Torsolo? The world may never know low. I would be so scared. Look, even the baby one is getting in on it. Okay, we don't want to get cannibalized. I'm running. Or not, well, just eaten, not even cannibalized. They fought a gorilla. Monsters. Now, blocking attacks is... Like, this is the only real way to grind this, is to just block a shitload of attacks, so... He needs to fight against an enemy that does a lot of really terrible attacks. And that just happens to be beak things. I've noticed that he just... He's pretty good at blocking their attacks. And I'm also more powerful than all of them. 
Good, good. Just, I think that had to be seven or eight. I'm actually surprised that he did that well. <laughs> okay, beak things, this nest is now mine. My own nest. Kind of neat. Now we can take all the things that other people lost here. Pole arm. I'll take that. I have no room. No room. A moon cleaver. This one's not even bothered by me eating here. It's just eating this guy. Is he still alive? No, he's dead. Definitely dead. Definitely dead. And we'll just keep on traveling along the river, and whenever we aggro beak things, I think we'll just eliminate their nests. Beak things, and actually gorillas are not bad here too. We also do 50% extra damage on them. That was too easy, almost. It's the equivalent of sand crabs in RuneScape. Uh, another nest. Already looted, but it's more valuable experience. 58 melee defense. We'll probably be at 59 by the end of this group. I just want to show you this in fast motion. It's kind of amazing. Look at all that he's blocking. I seem to have caused a little trouble for the hivers. They're all swimming through the acid. We'll explore the rest of this river. And now something that I've truly feared is taking place. It, we're actually running out of beak thing nests. A fact I thought I would never regard with depression, but I'd be lying if I told you that I wasn't in distress. Hmm, where else in the world where everyone always hate me? There is one place, one place very close nearby. I am unambiguously hated by the holy nation and it can't hurt to try. <laughs> okay, let's bring them out. We can at least fight a town guard. Even One Punch Man had trouble fighting an entire town, but let's see how Torso- Whoa! Nice! He needs more melee attack and defense. If he manages to land a few decent hits here, he could make the entire holy nation into a group of robotic-limbed, self-hating incel warriors. Look, we have another Naruto He's fighting with only his legs! Only his legs just draw them all out of the town. <laughs> now, one thing that Torsillo will have much less trouble with is the range combat, because he actually wears armor, unlike, uh, One Punch Man. I mean, he can heal up practically entirely after these fights. We can just take everything off of all of them. Get everybody in the holy nation naked. When I'm done with them, they'll just be the naked nation. And in this fashion, we slowly attack the town. Anyone who gets up is just gonna be a guy in his underwear and nothing to fear. All of the clothes will just levitate outside. Oh, there goes a leg. Now, the Holy Nation are also canonically against using robotic limbs, which is really the reason why they attack me on sight. Extremely superstitious. But wouldn't it be ironic if they needed- it? Oh, great, we're helping the Hungry Bandits as well. You know what? Let's just have the Hungry Bandits go in and let's help them in their attack of the town. Two arms, two arms by minions. Wow, they're actually attacking the walls. The Hungry Bandits might help me take out. They might be able to take out one Holy Sentinel. And that would be enough. That would be enough. Let's help them. I wish to join you on your crusade. Your crusade for food. Wouldn't it be funny to just dress, like, knock out the Hungry Bandits, dress them up in the, uh, in the Holy Sentinel's armor, and then use that to attack the town? Like, they all find that suddenly they're rich, but they're still programmed to attack people for food. We're actually gonna get to the end of this town with- Jeez. Ah, oh, there goes an arm. There- Oh, no, leg. Uh, always a leg. Great, actually helping the hungry bandits get what they need now. And they aren't even bothering me. They aren't even bothering me. Nobody in this town seems to have any idea of what is going to the, on with the guy next door. Let's just keep making our way through the town with the holy, uh, I was gonna say the holy hungry bandits. Oh, here we go. This is Inquisitor Seda, right? Or Inquisitor Seda? Whatever is his name. He's actually one of the more powerful ones. Though this might not be him because it just generically says Inquisitor. There is one really powerful in this town though. Like he was one of the later bosses for One Punch Man. Man. This guy is gonna be great for our training. Yeah, we just went- Whoa, we just bounced up like four points in one swing. This guy is fantastic for training. Yeah, somehow I felt like fighting bosses at this point would actually be better training for our character than any of those low-level guys. Generally, fighting people stronger than you is better. Yeah, there we go. 59 melee defense. We need somebody like this. One of my equal. I'm surprised he's actually still standing. His left arm is just- like, wiped out now. He must have really good melee attack and defense. Ooh, a battle even I can't win. Well, we'll get back up. Repair. Fortunately, he doesn't actually have a chance to take up on that victory. Okay, great. Fighting enemies stronger than me. And you know what else? I'm gonna sleep in your bed. I'm sleeping in your bed. Oh, shit. Really? You can't- Come on. Can't sleep in an enemy bed? All right, I'm gonna need to sleep outside like a dog. Get in that sleeping bag. Little R&R &R never hurt anybody. And the hungry bandits are continuing their assault on the town. Now they have only holy citizens to defend themselves. Look at all that shit. 
were completely recovered in a short amount of time. Without any further ado, let's just go to the police station. We could unlock the prisoners and we fight the High Inquisitor here. Oh, that's a lot of, that's a lot of shit. This is their Inquisitor. Let's just draw them out and they mad. They definitely mad. Now, these are some of the best guys in town. We might lose this one. Yeah, I'm gonna have to run. Let's draw them out, fight them one by one again. It is good though. We're fighting high tier opponents, which is great for our gains. And as you may know, it's all about the gains. Here's a paladin. Jeez, he's one of the stronger ones. I think it's weird that fights in Kenshi end like this. Just a wonderful pile of clothing. I like how this guy's corpse rendered into the ground. It's just, it's just a pair of legs sticking straight up. Well, I may not be strong enough for inquisitors, but I know someone of great strength who I might be able to fight. Down in the south, there is one down here even stronger than Tor Solo. If we just go through Caden. Oh, there's even another Benest of Beef. Jesus, I did not know that this was here. More money. More money. Good. More money. More money. Let's just go back and buy a trader's backpack. Come back with the eggs. Now, there should be an old prison right here. There it is in the distance. And this is the throne of the Gorillo King. He's enormous and dumb, but he's very powerful. And he might actually be useful for us. Got the lock on the first try. No guards. Barbed wire. Here we face the man. The myth. The legend. The leader of the... <laughs> They're so obs- they're- it looks like fighting an army of LOL Tyler 1s. But I think we'll, uh, we'll actually have an advantage here because our melee defense gets a buff against, uh, opponents stronger than us. And they're just so hilariously buff that it makes the fight even funnier. Plus, they don't have any weapons. So they're not even that strong. They're good martial artists, though. Un unfortunately, I have a sword, so... But they get back up full strength, and I respect that about them. Except if they lose an arm. Or they're this guy, who is now Naruto running. Okay, goodbye. Have a nice life now. Where is the leader? Bring me to the leader. I just had to get a picture of this. Sometimes if you pause, it's just amazing in this game. Look look at the neck. All right, pause over. <laughs> Let's just take him out. I love how he can just block their feet with his sword. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Oh, for these guys, we just have to take off their arms and legs. Martial arts isn't any good if you don't have any hands. There we go. And just sleep it off. Oh, what is that? Skin spiders. Oh, dude. Oh, these should be not a problem. Not a problem for Tor Solo. They are large and they're half life in though. God, these things are straight out of Half-Life. Every now and then you come across in Kenshi an enemy that's just so flippantly buff or ridiculous that it makes you question everything that came before. Where is he? That throne is about his size. I was expecting him there. And he should be here on the top floor. No, where is he? There he is. <laughs> the gorilla, <laughs> the gorilla king. He is thick, thick with two C's. Okay, let's draw him out. Uh, oh, he actually does have a sword. I forgot about this. The, the sword is like a toothpick to him though. <laughs> Look, it's going through his finger. All right, we'll draw them out. We want them outside for this fight. Martial artists have a huge advantage indoors. And there we go. Uh, as for the the king, it doesn't really matter. <laughs> there he goes. So sad. Uh, you know what? Let's fight him up. Uh, and we might still be considered inside. Ken, how will we do against him? Now, he's really powerful. He might do a good number on me. Uh, as long as he doesn't get my right leg before or my head. He's a really powerful opponent, though. He just doesn't have as many people guarding him as the Holy Nation. <laughs> Look at this. Look at the size of him. How much? Oh my god. Look, we took him out. <laughs> there he goes. Oh man, this guy is too buff, too thick. He has a May 2 exile plank. I'm actually gonna just leave this stuff on him and grab him after I repair myself. And let's just take off his, take off everything. There is no enemy more hilariously buff. Look at the connection between the shoulders. <laughs> it looks like Roid Rage. This is a bigger enemy than <laughs> the feet compared to the hands. <laughs> He's prison big. He is prison big. Let's go home to Squin. Partly because I actually might want to save his sword. It's one of the better ones in the game. And have a full set of May 2 heavy weapons would be nice. I just can't think of an enemy more hilariously buff than this guy. I mean, Catlon is weird as in, a, in his own way, but he's like, he's tougher. He's not, he doesn't need to be this big to prove anything. I want you to just look at what happens to the shoulder though, when it connects to the arm. Maybe he didn't, maybe this isn't actually muscle. It's just, maybe that's why we took him down so quickly. Maybe it's not actually muscle. Oh well. And I'll take out the Gorilla King. Switch out swords for a second. Put his in my chest. Take that one back. He's in the stairs. Having just a little bit of trouble there. I'm gonna throw him out of my home. There we go. We'll first aid him because we want to bring him back alive. And that's enough. Pick him up. <laughs> the size difference is amazing. And turn him in here. 50,000 cats. Boom. Oh, my head hurts. <laughs> now that that's over. Sell his armor and call it a day. Poor Logan is still stuck laboring. And I still have one last foe I want to fight. Something that will prove a worthy foe. 
Off in the east, there are enemies greater than any. Greater than anything that anyone has seen or heard before. The strange thing about this enemy is, you don't have to look too hard to find it. And when you find it... Well, this enemy is actually just a custom creation of mine. I decided that the crabs in Kenshi were just a bit too small, so I decided to raise their size. They do come in peace, but... If you anger them, they will F up your day. Well, if and when you ever have the pleasure of modding this game, which it turns out that it's painfully easy to mod this game, you can have fun making all of the animals ten times their normal size, and the hitboxes, my favorite part, are just completely messed up. And they actually scale in health with the size. <laughs> Though I can't ever seem to hit them, so... I was getting hits off on these guys with martial arts before, but now it just seems to be stopped. They're flailing in no direction. Let's see if we can get any of the... Well, if I ever hit one of these crabs, it'll be a miracle. Let's at least see if we can get into town. And now that I... Or even buy one of these magnificent creatures. Uh, not in here? We seem to be trapped on a tree. Can we actually even hit any of them? <laughs> I did manage to hit them with another character before, when I was testing this all out. They can hit me, so... I don't know, maybe it's just attack animations. Ah, uh, the crab raiders are not happy with me. It's time for me to go. Time for me to go. Made an embarrassment of myself here. Here I was, thinking that Jurassic Park-sized crabs would be the answer to grinding. But it turns out that they just make your life more complicated. In retrospect, I might need to drop down the size of the crab a bit. But we can at least fight the crab raiders, and I think we'll stand a winning fight against these guys. Plus, the crab armor looks fairly strong as well. And it's another good opportunity to train our melee defenses. Uh, these guys are actually really strong. I've never fought against them before, but their crabs aren't really doing much, unfortunately. I was really rooting for the crabs, too. But it's time for me to go now, or I will... I will get my shit pushed in. Oh, I don't have a med kit. No, I just don't have it on my back. Here we go. Right. Oh, I forgot that there's also just giant crabs everywhere. So it turns out that if you change the size of one crab, you change the size of all the crabs in the world. So yeah, all the crabs are now... Currently, this is a factor of 10. I think you could make them even bigger, though. It's amazing. They're peaceful, too. As long as you don't aggro them, they are peaceful. So yes, it is disgusting. Yes, it's a shit show, but it's my shit show. And now with all that information in mind, let's fight one of the crab raiders to death. We should at least be able to take out one of these guys and I heard their armor is really powerful. Good, we've got one of them down. Oh shit, I just want your armor really. And again, we can't. Man, it looks like we're stuck here. <laughs> That's okay, Dorsola. You did enough work for one day. Alright, let's go live. Let's go visit Tin Fist and be off from this place. This gives me the creeps. Really, an entire land of ten times the size crabs. That's there are far more than ten times the size. At, at least eleven times. <laughs> And unfortunately, that's actually everything that we have for today. My journey's been amazing. And although our friend Logan is still trapped, I'd say that Torsolo is nearly powerful enough that he might be able to liberate him. Oh, with that, I think I'm going to bid you adieu. There's been far more shit posting than anyone could manage on one day. And I've actually been working full time in the background, so life has been kind of a balancing act. But I'm loving every minute of it here. Anyway, as always, thanks for all the kind support. I'm not a big guy on calls to action, but if you want to follow me anywhere else and see more shit posting game ideas, I do have a Twitter and a Discord, along with an Instagram for pictures of what I'm drinking. As always, more content coming up, and be on the lookout for more Torsola. As always, my name's Ambiguous Amphibian. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye bye